Hello and welcome to SpoilerCast, a Hungry Gamers offshoot that aims to inform, entertain and educate you on one particular release from within the video game, film or television geek culture universes. And on this episode, we are tackling a game that was recently released as of the 14th of September, currently scoring an 88 on Metacritic. It's developed by Arcane Studios as a PlayStation 5 timed console exclusive also currently available on PC, we're talking about the first-person action-adventure hit, Deathloop. And a little bit of backstory on Deathloop before I bring in my two fantastic cohorts for this podcast. So in Deathloop, you're obviously taking on the role of Cult, an assassin stuck in a time loop who has been tasked to take out eight targets known as Visionaries across the island slash area known as Black Reef before midnight. As leaving even one alive will cause the time loop to reset and undo all his hard work. Further, should Colt die before taking out the eight targets, he will wake up back up at the start of the loop. So that is the premise slash the concept in a very, very broad, condensed, short nutshell. But uh, yeah, I'm Brendan Wire. You can find me on them socials at Brendan 8 bit And joining me today, Australia's John O'Peck. You can find him at John himself on the socials. And Australia's Matt Tilby. You can find him at it's Tilby on the socials. Gentlemen, welcome back from your time at Black Reef. How the bloody hell are you going? Doing Very good. good. I'm uh, a little bit uh, dizzy from all the looping, but uh, I'm excited to chat about this one. This was a, an interesting game, to say the least. It really, really was. Like, um, I don't know if... I'd, like take Saying it took me by surprise is a little bit of disrespect, I think, for, for Arcane and this game, and it's... You know, it's been in our peripherals for quite a while. It's been heavily advertised and marketed for a good long while, especially leading up to its initial sort of release and then it copped a bit of a delay on the back of COVID. But uh, it is here. It's been out now for a little, oh, just on two weeks at time of recording. It's the 28th of September right now. But um, maybe we jump in, share some general thoughts. What did we think of the game? How was our overall experiences? Then sort of branch off into some other subcategories here for spoiler cast. Obviously, listeners, this first portion of the podcast is going to be completely spoiler free. So if you haven't played the game, you can listen on without fear of having anything spoiled in the game as far as major narrative situations, major character developments, anything like that that's really going to shape your opinion of the game. And then after we get done with the spoiler-free stuff, we're going to go full spoilers on everything and anything, but we give you full warning on that. So, uh, Tilby, maybe start us off. What was your general thoughts? Like, what do you think of Deathloop, Happy? Lead us down the path. Yeah, I think you you hit the nail on the head there, sort of talking about how the game had evolved um, since the first time that we saw it at, I think it was E3 a couple of years back. Um, and they were sort of talking about the the 1v1 sort of aspect between Colt and Juliana, which was really the, the major, I guess, selling point of it then. But having not really learned much about the looping aspect of the game, um, I guess I kind of went in blind a little bit. Um, and having played... Uh, 12 minutes the Annapurna game uh, a little while before this it was probably like the the best thing to do because it, it was really a blessing because learning about the looping aspect of the game and, and being more patient with the looping aspect of the game case in point I absolutely hated the looping aspect of 12 minutes just uh, as, a, as a forewarning um, but it, it just allowed me to prepare for that trial and error that planning aspect of it um, in general Arcane have done I think a a fantastic job just in this perfect package of this really stylish aesthetic this unique gameplay and a story that on the whole was pretty easy to get into like the the main sort of part of it you could easily get into but there's plenty to dig deep into once you sort of broke past the shell and and got into it but yeah I think in general it was a, a really sort of interesting start for me and I thought um yeah it was it was definitely something I wanted to uh dive more into yeah, 100%. What about you, JP? What's your feelings after uh, experiencing and breaking that loop? Or did you not break the loop? We'll find out later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is currently my game of the year, which is, is high praise, and I did love the game. It just hasn't... It also hasn't been the best year, or it's very back-loaded, I guess, as far as big game releases. Um, and so, yes, I did really enjoy it. I'm a big fan of the Arcane Dishonored, games i've recently played prey like just before this not even realizing that uh that that there was any connection with the studios just somehow overlooked that but it is so good by the way Mm. like listeners if you haven't played prey 
And if you're also a utilizer of Xbox Game Pass, go get that in your hands ASAP because it is so good. Yeah, it, it was an interesting experience playing Prey and going straight into this. If if I if I had played Prey and had made that connection to Deathloop, I probably would have been less excited for it because as much as I enjoyed Prey, it's more of that humorless, gritty, dark kind of Bioshock with no sense of humor um, vibe going on, which is great for the tense kind of experience that that they went with in Prey as that kind of sci-fi horror but this is this was so much fun it was uh I I really once I saw the first trailer I kind of stopped paying attention to it because I just wanted to go in as blind as possible and by the time the game hit my PS5 I really didn't know much of anything about the game except that there's a loop and that you got to take someone out like assassinate people and it was going to have some of that crazy frenetic arcane kind of gameplay and being a big fan of the dishonored games it did feel to me like a spiritual successor it's like taking those abilities that we'll talk about later and the stealth combat and and applying it to this instead of a, a sprawling like game with multiple different stages like dishonored is it's these contained open areas that you can tackle in a, a bunch of different ways and and the, because there's only four stages they, they, there can be so much detail and so much depth to those areas and I enjoyed uncovering the story of, of what happens in this game without knowing anything going into it I enjoyed like overhearing all the dialogue and finding the notes and just taking in all that diegetic storytelling the environmental storytelling and um similar to Tilby like mentioning 12 minutes I'd played Returnal earlier this year and this type of um, cycle uh, cyclical (laughs) yes I think cyclical is the right way this type of cyclical loop I guess this Groundhog Day concept for me works so much better in this kind of game where you actually do progress like take your head knowledge and that's all you need you don't have to like improve your skill each time is that like the the common thread? Do you think for for it's, games this yeah. year, like the big hot it is topic, the trend, is isn't just it? like that Groundhog Day cyclical sort of style of gameplay? Um, but I mean, certain games have hit it better than others, and yeah, Returnal was another big mm. one for me as well. So it, it was it was cool to see that sort of that style of gameplay return yeah. here. Yeah, they they really delivered. I think Arcane and like I know that we sort of talked about trying to avoid spoilers and, and all the media beat up leading up to this release. But I think the good thing too is the trailers that are in circulation that you see on YouTube or on Twitch or even on free to air TV. It doesn't really give anything away. Like it just sort of gives you just enough of interest and intrigue to go, what is this? You know, what do you mean? Like break the loop, protect the loop. What is this thing? You know, like so I really like that. Uh, we've we've all managed to go into this game with with clear eyes and and free of spoilers and and free of I guess any real understanding of of what this game encompassed and I love my time with this game like I, I'm I'm in unison and sort of um, with you two here that it is one of the games of the year. I don't know if it's my game of the year just yet I need to sort of reflect on that a little bit more but yeah. it's certainly in the discussion for me like I adored my time with this game. I love the characters. I like the tone. I think just having that sort of, uh, you know, obviously it is harsh and brutal and there's blood and viscera going on everywhere and you can you can kill people in a whole host of creative ways. But the fact that they've sort of painted it with a, a nice coat of comedy over the top and, and some of the dialogue, it's, it's real, it's honest. Uh, the voice acting is phenomenal. The art style is really great. The soundtrack the guns feel nice the abilities feel nice like if you've played an arcane game like if you played dishonored one or two if you played um the most recent prey or even played wolfenstein young blood you know what you're going to get when you pick up the controller like those same movement styles and the way guns and weapons feel in your hand it is pretty well you know arcane dna right through there it doesn't feel alien to those other games if you've played them before and yeah, it's it's been a or well, not really a pleasant surprise because I had high hopes for this game, but it's nice to see that I guess it delivered. It stuck yeah. the landing. Yeah, it delivered, and you can already see like eighty-eight on Metacritic at the moment. 
the user score is a little bit ho hum, but you take that as a grain of salt because you get a lot of people, you know, being angsty and tanking scores for whatever reasons. But 88 on Metacritic is pretty goddamn impressive. A whole host of early chatter about Game of the Year awards and one of the best games of 2021 or even one of the best games of the last few years, all deservedly so. But yeah, I had a great experience. Like, um, it wasn't without its challenges and stuff, but that was, I think, the sign of good development in this game. Like, once you learnt the... Not trying to uh, be too punny, but, you know, the, the gameplay loop itself <laughs> and understanding the best way to get from point A to point B, like those four... You know, you wouldn't call them unique biomes, but, you know, those four yeah. levels, which then become almost 16 levels, you could say, because there's slight changes based off the four time periods. You've got morning, midday, afternoon, and evening. So there is slight little wrinkles that are different depending on when you're going to mm. one of those four hubs at a certain time of the day, which is nice. So it made the tediousness and the repetitiveness of this game feel fresh each time for me. Like it never got to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I got to go here again. Kill me now. Like it felt good and fresh and exciting and then once i worked out how to do certain runs to get to certain places which which areas to avoid enemies to kill so i can just you know speed run my way through to get stuff it was just awesome mm. but um story and the characters let's maybe jump into that yeah i mean i like i said didn't go into this knowing anything about the story or the characters so i i found it very intriguing off the bat and it's it's really that's really what they've gone for like intrigue because the character of Colt doesn't understand or know anything. Like he, he seemingly has some kind of amnesia. Doesn't know why he's in this loop. He doesn't know why he's on this island. Doesn't know what his relationship is to all these other people. So you're discovering these things as he's learning it, which I really enjoy that kind of angle. And all the while, you're getting this great banter on the walkie-talkie from him, and like the the antagonist juliana and i think that that relationship really builds through through that walkie-talkie at the start and end of each level essentially um and the way that was handled i thought was really great and the, the dynamic between them was really cool and just like trying to like they, they, they had a chemistry you know um we won't spoil anything about what happens later but on, on top of like i guess that being the main relationship and the main dialogue in the game there really is nothing else as far as cutscenes like there's nothing that's you're forced into apart from like the ending of the game there's a there's a cutscene um and like you, you do get the like the the strip back sort of pop culture art in between like loops when you've uncovered yeah. and yes. done something of note yeah. but yeah there's nothing outside of that end end cut where you're getting taken away from the control of Colton, yeah. the overall and experience. The, the eight visionaries who are all pretty well-rounded, like by the end of the game, you have a really good sense of who they are and what makes them unique and how they stand out and what their role is. And that's all achieved without cutscenes or without Colt interacting with them, uh, which is a testament to like the design, I think, of the game and the way I, I, I used the word before, like the diegetic storytelling is that you're hearing the PA announcements and you're hearing like the audio logs and you're overhearing them having dialogue with each other or with other characters or even like the NPCs talking about these visionaries. And that builds out the game where at the start you, you might hear it and it might go in one ear and out the other. But because there's these loops, you actually hear the same dialogue over and over and that reinforces a lot of this stuff and it, it reinforces the concept that of, of, of the groundhog day the loop nature to it so usually in the game when you hear the same dialogue it's like oh you know you might think that's lazy storytelling or that's lazy game development but it actually works in their favor here because it's it's part of of the experience of you know bill murray walking out the hotel and and socking ned in the face you know it's or, or stepping in the pothole or whatever it, it's that it's that loop so it just works and i think the characters are all interesting and have their own little gimmicks like the the, the visionaries i'm talking about and they, they've managed to to build them up as um having these unique abilities so they all seem formidable in their own way and i just love that the, the world that they were able to to portray with that that approach that lack of of cutscenes, but just the depth to 
to the to the collectibles that you find and and everything that tells the story in that way yeah any, anyone that loves a a game where you get off the beaten track and, and get rewarded for exploration this is certainly one of those games like every mini comp email mm-hmm. or, or message that sent every scrap of paper sitting around whether it be a you know a, a set of floor plans or blueprints or you know back back and forth or just like a diary entry all that adds to the game and every one of those little breadcrumbs helps progress the story and helps progress cult get closer to killing these visionaries like it's so great that it's just like just gradual layers that's sort of getting peeled back with the story and, and sort of there's no direct hand holding in this game like a drops you in this game and you can choose to go which way like it does have a gentle nudge like you should probably go um Mm. seek out this visionary first but if you want you can just run rampant across one of the other sort of four areas of uh black reef and uncover and explore as you see fit which is awesome and it doesn't penalize you for for going off yeah the hand holding tends to more come from like the objectives updating on it on their own when you like read something so you don't have to like make the connection like oh that 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 piece of paper mentions you know the code to the safe so i have to keep that in mind like it, it kind of like just updates the objective for you which i'm very grateful for because there's so many different threads pulling and you might read something yeah. about you know one character on one island that doesn't come into into context until the the evening on a different location and a different character so yeah how about you tilby yeah i i, I agree in that sense that the the menu with all of the sort of branching arcs or sort of leads for each um each particular character or a little storyline piece uh, was a really nice touch because without it i would have been absolutely (laughs) fucked i would have been running around like a headless chook but i i enjoyed that fact where it was sort of updating it Mm. as you went along and picked up all these pieces there were a couple of times when i'd you know forget to search every sort of cranny in a room um and i'd be looking around for for hours sort of you know not finding the next way forward but that's something i've got to learn as as part of a game like this for sure but in terms of the visionaries like i found them to be incredibly unlikable yeah all just absolute (laughs) pieces of shit every single one of them (laughs) um and i think that was that was the beauty of the game sort of evolving as you go on you sort of start to realize how much like they are just absolutely terrible human Uh beings which i think made the the act of killing them all or attempting to kill them all that much more worthwhile um yeah it's a bit of the bioshock sort of, kind of thing going on where each person is twisted in their own kind of way yeah like you you sort of get a reasoning for why cult is doing this or and then you sort of get the their the the visionary side of why they don't like cult and it sort of like helps continue that overarching mm. story um, as to why he's trying to kill the visionaries and you sort of mentioned that banter between Juliana and Colt like if the, and I've said this to you guys before in, in our Facebook chat like if this was ever made into a, a, a motion picture which absolutely I hope it does Idris Elba and mm. Zazi Beats please <laughs> thank you cool. um, check check yeah I'm down <laughs> for that casting very that, much so that banter is like absolutely crucial um, and I think even as well like the 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 words beach bubbles that sort of appear whenever you're walking around the map um whether they're giving hints or sort of like as a as a sort of piece of his mind previous to the loop um i felt was was really um crucial or or like if you had to pull a lever to to kill someone or, or get to a certain point that would sort of lead you without sort of holding your hand which i thought was really nice um but yeah like i think in general it all sort of i guess fit it all yeah. nicely is probably the best way to say it and it, it's it sort of helped you go along without really sort of pushing you in that direction or nodding you it was sort of like hey maybe go this way or or find this and this and it was sort of like a very refreshing way of doing things without sort of holding your hand so much mm. no 100 percent. like really good cast of characters uh very believable antagonists i think like you, you get to know a lot of them through your loops as far as their mannerisms, their personalities, reading their journal, yeah, things getting enunciated through the PA, exchanges when you do try to take them down and if, if you get noticed and found out, you you watch their um, stress levels, you know, multiply and go through the roof as well and high security into the, their certain, like, you know, their, their strongholds, I guess you could mm. call them, uh, that they've got. And, um, 
yeah it's just it's just fun like even just the the random um eternalist in the game like every character in this game feels like they serve a, a purpose um like as you touched on jp just listening to those little snippets of throwaway conversations can open up certain things for you whether it be a, a code to a safe or something to get certain weaponry or certain information down the line it pays to just be aware and always sort of zoning in on your surroundings and, and giving everybody the time of day before you ultimately probably shoot them in the head like i did through most of my playtime in this game but um yeah if we sort of jumped into a little bit more deeper dive spoiler free on the gameplay and then maybe the performance aspects that would probably even weave into you know furthermore into combat and sort of um play styles and whatnot but the gameplay loop itself which i think we've pretty well touched on here but jp i'll throw it back over to you first just um to get your feelings on how you thought that sort of core gameplay yeah. loop was for yeah. Deathloop. so i guess if we're talking about like how the game felt and everything to, straight off the bat i did find the movement kind of stiff um not in it, it just didn't feel as good as some other maybe the previous like dishonored games or prey or whatever i've played recently and i don't know why that is i did tweak i I see. I can see in your notes too, Brendan. Like tweaking the sensitivity, trying to figure out what the sweet spot was. Trying to figure out is it just like the way that console shooters feel? Like I, I was questioning myself. I was like, is this how all first-person shooters feel? And I'm just realizing it now. Um, my um, <laughs> my well, not really an issue, but my sort of adjustment with these types of games is because I do most of my first-person shooters. Mm on the xbox and i've got an elite controller which which has got customizable stick levels and sensitivity so i've got them really sort of loose and taller so there's less movement needed to sort of look and aim and just general strafe and movement so in this game we've got that dual sense with sort of the smaller sticks it is very noticeable yeah. for me and i think that was maybe jarring but it also some of the movement just in general was just like very robotic yeah. at times especially if I was clicking the left stick at the same time and Colt decides to try and strafe as I'm mid-combat when I didn't mean to. And I'm, oh, shit, I'm against the wall. Oh, now I'm dead. But um, yeah. yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I, I adjusted after an hour or so, yeah. and then I felt pretty I, good. I definitely adjusted. But then also at the same time, like the menu screen, like the, the pre-mission where you're choosing your loadout and everything, you're controlling it with like a mouse on the screen. And I found that yeah. super sensitive, and I found it... A, a bit of an adjustment to to get my head around like the way to move that around the screen so it, it's by all means that's my probably first critique of the game is that it didn't always just feel polished in in that aspect but once you get your head around that it's it's, it's great and the, the combat and the actual gameplay itself it's very satisfying all the guns that i used felt good like they just felt like there was wasn't any guns that i like maybe it's the aim assist just doing what it's meant to do but they all felt the, the nail so guns good. are the biggest piece of shit. i didn't i, I didn't they use them were didn't so like them. useless hated them hated them hated them hated if I had them, a, hated if, them yeah if i Tell had something like that where i felt like it wasn't as effective as something else i just tended to not go back to it so i i did have yeah. we'll, we'll get to like our preferred abilities and guns later but yeah i, I avoided that one um <laughs> But like as far as like the structure of the game, I, I enjoyed the process of starting off. You've got no guns, and you're kind of having to scrap together whatever you can, and slowly you build out more abilities, more weapons that you can retain. Um, the perks that make such a big difference to your character and your abilities as well. And so I enjoyed that feeling of getting stronger and better and smarter, and the knowledge that you hold as cult becomes such a big part of it over time as well and I, I thought that was a really cool approach to you know it, maybe you go back to the start when you die at the end of the day but you've you've got something like you've learned something that will take you further um the whole way that the investigation of these different targets worked i, I thought was really cool the way that you're like i said before figuring out who they are and their abilities but also that kind of like concept of you have to take out eight of them there's only four time periods so having to have them converge into crossing paths throughout the day like that became a really yeah. fascinating thing to me okay so in my head i'm doing the math like okay if i can get three of them at the party and then if i can get two of them here and then 
I can take out that one in the morning and then that will work. Like it was just that kind of like detective feeling that you have. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a super sleuth at times yeah. in that e- game, don't Even you? though, oh, you know, the game is holding your hand and, and doing the math for you, but you still feel like you're behind it. And, and that's a good feeling. So it, it is, uh, I think Tilby mentioned something like a first person shooter for, for smart people or something like that in, in the chat. You're thinking man's yeah, first thinking person man's shooter. Yeah, thinking man's first person shooter. <laughs> It's a good way to describe this game. Yeah, and sure. that's, I like to think of myself as a thinking man. Um, so it's for <laughs> me because I'm I'm not one for the you know pure, you know combat kind of first person thing. I like the more of the you know the Bioshock, the you know the what like Cyberpunk or whatever, where you're able to utilize stealth and try and sneak in and use your abilities. And then when things go awry, it's like okay. My guns are loaded and I'm getting out of here or I'm running away. And it's it, 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 you feel really empowered by the end of the game that even if you are stealth in it at the start, by the end of the game, you can just like run through an area and be like, I can take the damage. It's fine. I'm going to heal half of my health back straight away or whatever it is. So, um, And there's like health kits just like everywhere in the game which which helps yeah yeah the old uh soda yeah. <laughs> was it fizz pop or whatever it's called yeah. I, I don't know the how this got through like the fda or whatever like the, the health message is not there <laughs> yeah the fizzy drink yeah. keeps you healthy yeah but uh yeah how about you guys as far as like the, the gameplay itself yeah i i i i sort of had no issues i guess in that sensitivity aspect that you guys were sort of mentioning at first like if anything i felt that the the climbing and sort of uh that aspect of maneuvering around places especially like up down sort of like jumping up over cliffs and rails and things i felt was actually quite smooth and fluid yeah Um, that double jump is such a godsend in that mm -hmm. game isn't it yeah and i mean even hopping and skipping everywhere even without sort of using the the trinkets and the the abilities like using the shift slab to to sort of get across large chasms in the blink of an eye like even with that that double jump it was so useful but even just the way that cult sort of clips onto cliffs and it means like okay i can just jump over the cliff or i can get over the rail quite quickly i felt that traversing was was quite easy um and quite sort of simple on its own even without those sort of abilities um i think in general that the trial and error aspect of the game was just as frustrating as it was satisfying um i i know i did say that if this is the thinking man's first person shooter but i'm definitely not a thinking man um (laughs) I have very much been known in first-person shooters to go out all guns blazing. So the the stealth aspect in any game has always been quite difficult for me. Uh, But this was definitely a game where I found that having those special guns, having those trinkets, having those abilities worked in my favor in a multitude of different ways. Um, Once you sort of nail down a, a specific set of trinkets and abilities, you know what works for you and you use it to your precision um, and I think those multiple runs allowed for those different tactics and loadouts. So, you know, I, I might have missed a, an enemy on one run or or found a different way to kill someone and then gone, okay, well, I can just load up the, the loop again and, and go for, for something else. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys. Like, I, I like the, the verticality in this game and, and the fact that it's easy to get high in a hurry. Uh, you know, not from the fizz pop. This is actually just from climbing <laughs> abilities and jumping and the, um, you know, the shift slab ability as well. So I like that you can go about your tasks and your your assassination attempts and whatever else in this game, whichever way you see fit. Like they just go, here's a sandbox. You play it however the hell you want. And that's a testament to Arcane there. Like I like that I felt free to do whatever I wanted in any particular run or any particular, you know, morning, noon, afternoon, night segment and just have fun and muck around because I know, oh, worst case, I just got to wait till the morning and I can try again, you know, let's let's muck around and try this, this sort of ability set to see if it's going to add more chaos or open more opportunities for me and um, it really rewards you for, for going out on your own and just having fun and thinking outside the square um, so so yeah, I, I love the gameplay. Um, I thought the movement was tight. I thought the overall experience as far as the varied combat, the varied fights you have with some of the some of the visionaries um, was just enough to keep things fresh and um, stopped you from getting too stale and maybe that was a little bit to do with the location changes where their little their little you know encampments 
or strongholds were just varied slightly enough to make it feel like it was something new and fun but overall yeah the the game feels good uh the, the loop is simple and satisfying yet complex and also just as satisfying but there is frustration um in in a game like this but it's good frustration because yeah once you conquer this thing you can't get past or this enemy mm. you just feel like you're on top of a like a mountain you're yelling out you're like i have the power you know you feel like he-man like you feel so good when you crack that code and you go oh my god i was doing it wrong the whole time so yeah the game is just so great in that regard and i think that then further expands into the combat which is the the, the meat and potatoes mm. of death loop so uh maybe we can talk about favorite abilities favorite weapons how do we play the game i'm going to jump in and start this off and i'm going to say i primarily played stealth like once i got my hands on that silent silence smg that was my gun for the rest of the rest of the game until i maybe ran out of bullets or needed to try and just cause more damage in a hurry because that gun combined with the the nexus slab which is the the ability where you cast this thing on a group of enemies and it interconnects them all with like this subliminal spider web thing and any damage you do or anything you do to one person it does to everyone else connected to this web so you can clear out rooms in such a hurry with this thing so i was just throwing that in headshotting one dude which then subsequently you know chained to a group of two or three and then i just keep going about my way keep going about my way um the carnesis ability i really like as well which is the the force pull or the force push or the slam whatever sort of um adjustments you make to that ability i thought that was really fun in conjunction with that where i'd be stealthing around i'd get overwhelmed like all right no worries stick this up your ass smash them all into the ground when they hit they had like a damage multiplier on it where they exploded so then it was like splash damage on everything and then just um you know dropping the the rapier which is sort of like the the single shot bolt action gun when you get the one that gun with the exploding rounds multiplier on it forget about it you just roll around with that thing and that silence smg and you just destroy everything but um yeah love the weapons hated the <laughs> nail guns um as i mentioned before they were so like i assume like, okay here's your stealth weapon single nail to the head dead oh no they just like turn around and laugh at you and then come at you and you've got to use like half a clip to get into these guys to knock them down so they went in the trash straight away but if i did pick up a new like exotic x1-esque one in a run i'd carry that just to then save it at the end use the residium which allows you to carry the weapons and your abilities over to, to subsequent loops so i just keep them just to stockpile a bit of a cache but i'd never use them because they were the worst <laughs> silence smg yeah I, I always picked up nails if i saw them but i never used any nail guns <laughs> yeah. yeah same <laughs> you just gotta pick it up um, I find it amazing that you didn't mention the shift because I would have felt naked without that. Like, it, it, I felt it was so essential to everything I wanted to do by the especially. Mm. Can I say on, on the shift thing, I hated that ability. The fact that you shift and it like shifted you, like it felt like a meter and you a half. You upgrade it, man. Like, you gotta upgrade, you upgrade that upgrade thing. <sighs> no, I, I even fully upgraded. It was like, you can go further and you can go higher. And then it was like two and a half meters. Like, I remember in Dishonored using that ability and you could like, you know, go 10, 15, 20 meters with this thing, you know, building to building. But in this game, it just wasn't meshing mm. for me. I tried because I thought that'd go really hand in hand with Nexus, but... There were there were a couple like of places, especially in uh, the Dorsey Manor yeah. as well as Charlie's yes. uh, d- condition totally. detachment where I don't know what I shift was <laughs> pretty crucial for it. So yeah, I, I was definitely all on Yeah, I mean... That to go with the like my my style was starting out stealth so the shift i felt was like really good for the infiltration and then the the aether or the however you pronounce that the the invisibility those two just went hand in hand if you feel like you can't escape from someone just pop an invisibility on you can either take them out or escape with the um with the shift so that was the the two that i used most of the time I, i messed around with the nexus which was always fun um, it, it kind of depended if, if I knew what my objective was for that mission like if it was just like a get in and get out kill one person kind of thing or if I was trying to steal something or find information like that would kind of influence whether I did take the invisibility or one of the other abilities um, and then on at the side of the weapons I had the silence pistol that I started out with basically from the like 
Oh, the one yeah, from the, the collector's edition, like the, the version we got. Edition. So quickly, shout out to uh, Bethesda for tossing us a few keys to uh, trial this game. And um, with that, yeah, we got a a purple rare rare shotgun and a purple silenced mm. pistol, which yeah, I did use that for a bit. Once I got that silenced SMG, Man, the pistol I never went found in the, back the silenced forever. MS- SMG. I don't know. I don't know what I did wrong, but I would have loved to have that. But anyway, the pistol did me proud. I had it from start to finish. Um, I had a special rapier that um, I can't remember what the ability was, but I just love picking off guys from distance with that. When you unlock the sniper rifle, I did not like that at all because it was weaker. It Loud. was yeah, it was weaker than the the rapier, the rifle, and it took up like when you weren't aiming it, it still took up like forty percent of the screen because it was just such a big chunky yeah. thing it was very big yeah in the I was UI, like this is <laughs> like messing with my peripheral vision here in this game so I, I I, you know used that when I first got it and then never again and the the one thing like that kind of bothered me was that when you switched weapons to a new one you kind of you lost the trinkets that were attached to the guns that you were switching out to so that that's why you just I, I pretty much stacked my favourite trinkets and just had them running duplicates on my main yeah. guns there so they were just doing massive damage and super quick reload on the rapier was so yeah, good too yeah so I had the I had that I had the rapier with the long distance the silence pistol for the stealth and then I had a shotgun that you could fire off like six or seven rounds without having to reload which was awesome when you come across like Juliana trying to take you out and it's like oh there you are and then you just go boom 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 and she's she's done for so that was the way that I approached the game it's kind of like it's kind of stealth until everything goes wrong you know classic like Metal Gear Solid 5 style like everything goes wrong and then just clear everyone out or run away I will say before I toss it over to you Tilby um, I did get a sniper from a drop from Juliana maybe two thirds into the game which was an epic one and the longer you held down the trigger the more damage it did so you could destroy people from so far away in one shot with it but I didn't use it very often because yeah, it was just silence SMG chain headshots to everybody yeah. running around and just throwing people off cliffs <laughs> with my force that's abilities. interesting because the, the, the sniper rifle that you get from one of the missions like a side mission I was like shooting people with that and it wouldn't even kill them like usually a sniper in a video game is like the only like one shot kill weapon and this one was like you had to shoot them three times and you didn't have to reload every single time which was good but it just seemed to defeat the purpose so I stuck with the rapier what about you young squire Matt Tilby yeah so I I started with shift and ether uh, as you guys were sort of mentioning I, I felt like they were probably the most important ones at least for the first half of the game um and then into the later missions um i definitely incorporated nexus especially for some of those party missions i felt were were Mm. pretty big um i think we haven't talked enough about the hacker majig and how crucial that was especially when you're trying to navigate cameras and especially the turrets i thought commandeering the turrets was huge for me because i would just walk around with my little suitcase walk into a room and just set it up and let it take them all out and and me just sort of adding suppressing fire but um for me in terms of a setup i i was sort of the same i wanted something that was even across all uh weapons so i did have that sort of pistol or smg um the silence sort of tribunalist i think it was called it was sort of like a nice like sky blue color um, it had the silenced feature on it so that was huge for me especially near the end um, at the start I did have the, the two pistols that sort of can connect into one uh, yeah. um, rifle which I thought was was kind of cool like that's a that's a unique sort of style I haven't seen yeah. before um, and then uh, when I ended up getting Charlie's shotgun um, that was pretty pretty big for me I just used that as sort of like you know blow everyone up and just keep on going rather than you know if I was spotted I'm just like bang 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 just pick them all off one by one by one um and then yeah i i did retain the sniper that you get from juliana um i do agree that it was far too loud to do any sort of stealthing with because like as soon as you shot someone everyone's like oh what's that i can hear that so it's like it it was just such a a terrible idea uh to use if you were i guess hadn't been spotted yet so it had its it had its uses, I guess. Uh, but I mean, even you know, 
for the most part, unless a radio eternalist who had like a radio the alerted scouts, backup, yeah. you were able to go, you were able to go guns blazing pretty much if you killed quickly enough, which I thought was good uh, for someone like me who's terrible at stealth anyway. Um, but I think the the variations on weapons was was okay but i think the fact that they had such different perks and unique abilities to them was was the real selling point behind them um i was not one of the people who ended up getting the the pre-order special bonuses so i had to fend for my life <laughs> if anything <laughs> thank you very and much and you yeah. did well what did yes, you guys I think did. of thank the grenades because i didn't find them very useful apart from a couple times i didn't yeah. use them once I use the tripwire mode to kill uh, Frank and his boys when they were in. You know how they were in that security room, and then you had to then pop the button to make oh, them come yeah. out. I had it lined across there because the first time I went in there, I pressed the button, but I didn't sort of manage to sort of move out of there in time and just got mowed the hell down super quick. So I'm I like, just, I need I to stagger my getaway. <laughs> I just set up about three three turrets in the same room and he's like, okay, I'm coming out now. And they all just went bing, bing, bing and just like picked him off. So I was just like, he's still in the room just like waiting to come out. And I'm just like, hang on, hold on a second. And I'm like wheeling out turrets and sort of setting them up in like a V shape just to sort of like pick him off the second he comes out. So I think I relied a little bit too heavily <laughs> on the turrets. Yeah, I but, just killed yeah. him. <laughs> I just did. I, <laughs> I hijacked it. Anytime I saw one, I'd hijack it just in case. Like yeah. if I pushed too aggressively and then I got a group of Eternalists on me, I'll just double back behind that turret just to give me some breathing room. And when you when you get some of the um, the trinkets that can do more damage to those, uh, like from the, from the turrets, it's really, really beneficial. But I, I was using, on the trinket talk, I was using the extended distance on the hacker jig just to make yeah. it easy so i was running that primarily just because i could get to those turrets or those uh you know security cameras a lot easier and not have to be right up beside it and nearly get my face shot off at the same time so yeah the hacker jig was awesome the grenades ho-hum and i was a bit upset that like it implied that you could maybe get different melee weapons just with when you go to the inventory screen i thought maybe you could change the machete out for something or customize it or something but no you still just got this stock beaten ass machete which made me a little sad because i wanted to customize that too and, and pimp that thing out with some trinkets but mm. it wasn't meant to be in terms of the one thing in the menu that i didn't really get to touch too much uh the costumes yeah. did any do you unlock there was a pre-order one no. like a tuxedo so you could go for the james bond kind of thing which i i only use that uh, for okay. going to the party <laughs> Um, that makes sense. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, it, it seems like it was like two out of thirteen unlocked. So I'm guessing that they're related to the multi, not the multiplayer, but the most of them to do loop. with yeah. the protect the loop, yeah. Um, which is interesting because it's like their costumes for cult. But yeah, anyway, um, that's yeah. That, that, there was a couple of things that seemed like they could have been could have been better utilized. Uh, before I forget, Brandon, I think like the the turrets like having just played prey that's like a a remnant of of that experience with the hacking turrets and to see that they they pulled that over and implemented that into the to this game was cool and um the the trinkets that i tended to go with tended to go with were like the one that made you like re regenerate more health regenerate health quicker um obviously the the double jump and then no yeah the double jump and then like having more health so i just made myself into a bit of a tank so that if things didn't go right i'd be i could be a bit more careless mm. yeah because because old colt for as tough as he is and the the situations you get into in this game he's not very very tank like he is very squishy there's times especially <laughs> where when you've got juliana invading your game and coming at you from the rooftops with a sniper rifle there was times where you just get like one or two tapped mm. from her or um i remember fighting against um fighting against harriet in sort of the into the warehouse slash the hangar. decrepit plane area the gun she had which sort of spewed poison as like a um as like an aoe that thing was one shot me all the goddamn time mm. she was she was a tough kill to get through but once i worked that loop out it was pretty fine but yeah there was times where i'm like come on no way you're this squishy but then it like i guess it makes you lean more into then okay i'll pop some trinkets for more health or more damage resist or whatever else so you can really cater to your play style which yeah. i really liked 
I, li I like that certain trinkets were almost exclusive for certain points in the game that you really needed that help. Like you were, you were mentioning um, Harriet's sort of section in the hangar and obviously down below there's a whole bunch of gas and obviously you, you step in that, you're in big trouble. And there was one trinket that's basically like, you're invulnerable to gas so you can just walk around coughing all the time and just, <laughs> you know, it's not going to kill you. And I found that incredibly useful for um, that, that part of Carl's Bay which was such a... A, a difficult part for me I think getting through that but yeah I was sort of the same like the hackamajig length um, was was crucial for me I think sometimes I did the <laughs> the extra damage on the turrets just to you know play through to that stereotype that I had um, and then it was yeah basically about you know extra melee strength and, and sort of you know not being I think the other one was less sound that you're making when you were you were crouching or sort of sneaking was was crucial yeah. for me so that was a, another big one but i think yeah the the, the range of um trinkets that were available was such a a nice addition because it, you once again tailor it to your play style which was such yeah. a big part of this <clears throat> game in in short there's a lot of trinkets to yeah adjust to how you want to play the game at any given time and then you can just pivot and change those out mm. in between loops so it's awesome that you can sort of uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna go all guns blaze and that didn't work now i'm gonna change to stealth now i'm gonna try and be passive like you can you can sort of um yeah come up with what's going to suit you best without uh fear of penalty yeah. which is nice so uh yeah maybe maybe let's jump into Quick. graphics presentation music let's bundle Quick all that question in together before we do that Brendan. um did you guys play with the ability for other players to join your game I did not because I don't okay. have the internet. So I didn't get to play protect the loop or have real people come in and try and muck up my day. Yes. So what I did was after I realized that people were invading at the worst <laughs> possible times, which I was going to uh, speak about in my nitpicks right. and gripes, I sort of turned it basically to single yeah. player. Um, and Juliana still kept invading my game at the worst <laughs> time. She comes in so much. Like it's yeah. awesome. But oh my god, it gets the heart it's, racing! Yeah. My like goodness, I, when like I'm halfway through a game trying to like pick off one of the bosses, and she's like, "Hey, you <laughs> know, let's have some fun." And, I'm like, and she's onto you like a bloodhound, like straight away. You're like, you take two steps, then you get shot in the ass because she's already found you. You're like, come on, man, mm. just let me breathe, let me get settled, and let me I, find a little sniper nest. I'd, I'd have to pump like a whole like clip of a of like super powered shotgun in it just to knock her down. And I'm like, bang, bang, bang. And she's just still running around with, oh, like, I'll talk about it more <laughs> in a sec. But I had some yeah. issues with that. Like, <laughs> on on the cult side of it, it's it's not great. But I can understand the the excitement about being on the Juliana side. Yeah, I um, I found that she turned up when you were kind of discovered. So it it was an incentive to to continue with the stealth aspect i guess like i like the the party's in the pm and i'd be like rushing to get to the party because you've done it so many times and i'd be careless and let people see me and i wouldn't worry because i can escape but then juliana shows up and it's like ah oh, maybe i should slow down a bit but i definitely turned that off because i just don't like other people messing with me because they always tend to be better at the game than i am yeah <laughs> and i played a little bit a very small amount of protect the loop and i didn't really enjoy it because for starters I was like waiting around for this other player to show up and then they just destroyed me so uh, you know it's cool that that's in there and some people were really into the, into the PvP stuff but yeah I never liked I, I guess these like Dark Souls another game that does this thing where you can invade other people's games and yeah. mess with them yeah yep. it, it's it's not it's not for me so I'm really really glad that you can just turn that off and not let people mess with your game because like imagine if you've like finally like you're going to pull off the the eight person like assassination and then just some random dude just comes in and he's like teabagging you it's like <laughs> oh no no spoilers or anything but it happened to me in the party where you're picking off three mm. people at once yeah i had juliana come at me then as well i was like are you kidding me yeah i'm yeah. busy here. Not, really, not now <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we can now move on, Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so if we're talking aesthetics, audio fidelity and stuff, graphically, the game looks stunning. I played this on my big old uh, 4K OLED television in the lounge room. It looked phenomenal. 
I went with sort of the 30 FPS HDR version option for the game just to make make those colors and textures and everything just pop as much as they could. The character models were great. The guns looked nice. The, the lighting and the weather effects, really phenomenal, whether it be sunrise, sunset, snow-capped, sun-laden, you know, nice diverse sort of weather effects that you're encountering and experiencing. And as far as the sound goes, Love the soundtrack, love the utilization of the dual sense for the comms chatter mm. back and forth between between Juliana and Colt. I think that's some of the sort of better use of the dual sense we've seen since the PS5 has come out. Like I really like that little way to sort of, you know, then imply that the dual sense is the hacker jig, yeah. you know, it is in your hand. So that was a kind of smart little sort of um, design choice there. But I really, really liked the scaling of the music depending on situations the pacing would dial up when you've been found or discovered and you've got enemies coming at you obviously you'd kill them and then that that it subside again and just go back to a bit more of an even tone and pace so the heart rate would go up and down as the music beats did as well mm. but overall graphics music really 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 well done yeah we haven't really mm. talked about the yeah. like the dual sense and i i thought it was a really reserved but thoughtful use of the haptics in this game where you know i don't know if you've played like borderlands 3 or some other games where like the haptics and the triggers with guns are just very like overt and full-on and powerful and resistant whereas in this game it just felt a bit less in your face and it's just a bit more subtle you know the the very subtle step every time cult takes a step you get this tiny vibration um, when you jump and that kind of thing so I thought they did a great job with with that and not overdoing it just showing a little bit of restraint mm. uh, having Juliana come through the 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 controller you know it's, it's not a new thing Transistor did this way back on PS4 I think with um, yeah on, in Transistor with, from Supergiant so it's, it's a cool thing and it's a very immersive thing when they can do it um, but in terms of like the music in this game, I loved that it was um, sometimes it was it was diegetic, like it was like the music at the party, or it was like you know the music from a from a, a guy that's like playing guitar, like he's in Mad Max on top of a truck, <laughs> badly. <laughs> he's playing yeah. it badly. Like, <laughs> um, and that was cool. But also just like when you when you get into combat, and then the music tells you that you've just killed the last person like that's a really cool use just... of uh of sound in, in that like the game like the the music's dynamic you know again not a new thing red dead is really great at this kind of thing even way back in like 2010 but it just it just the the loop of it, it means that the loop of the music has to be short enough that it can end within like three seconds of you killing the last person and i was always really impressed when it just ended like almost the exact second that the last person died um which sounds really like horrific when i'm, I'm talking about people dying but uh it, it's, it's a violent video game <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot of killing in this game, listeners. Mm. If you haven't already put that together, you kill hundreds upon hundreds of people and it's the same people you kill mm. over and over again because yeah, it's loop. okay. So you kill old Jimmy Smith from the shop down the road. It's okay because they don't have faces. They, uh, you know, they have the, the masks or like the very like bright, you know, single color, bright palette kind of thing, which um, is is it, it's definitely an aesthetic uh and overall i really did like the the polished ui and the presentation of this game definitely going for that 70s black exploitation film look and it totally works with uh obviously like the character of cult feels like he's stepped out of some of those films and that was definitely a clear influence even in like the death loop um typography that you see that that's a, a really like black exploitation um heavy influence there and just the the 60s vibe in general works really well it's obviously a uh creative licensed interpretation of the 60s with the the computer emails or whatever they call them what was it com mini coms yeah and and some some cool gadgets like that but um it's a it's just a really cool and colorful world where you know that's that's how we that's how we understand the 60s and 70s it's it's almost like a little bit of that like 
hippie kind of vibe sometimes and then there's um yeah just just a good mix of of all those different vibes that um that make up th- that era so i thought that they they were smart to set the game a few decades back and and even cults like mm. jacket with the you know tassels and and all, all this kind of thing like it just adds a bit more than if it was just generic 2000s modern kind of uh, aesthetic yeah i i definitely feel like that 60s 70s aesthetic was a big plus and how you you sort of mentioned it there john how they sort of molded the 60s 70s style with you know modern day sensibilities using the computer for mm. messaging using the hacker majig even going to conditioned attachment which is such a like those role-playing games that charlie makes or <laughs> felt such like a, a modern day sort of thing and um that that sort of combination of past and, and sort of present was was really unique i agree in in the sense of the the eternalist costumes being sort of like the bright retro sort of style i got a big like um we happy few vibe out of yeah their sort of like 70s <laughs> aesthetic which was really interesting it's like um, a clockwork orange the music kind of thing yeah that's yeah, what i was just of. about to say yeah yeah, yeah. um the the just music rape and happen in this luckily well, yeah the the music was was really reminiscent of that time um especially when you go to, to ramblin franks and you, you hear it all at the club um i thought it was very catchy very sort of of its time I felt like the the menu music that John had mentioned, obviously that sort of pre-mission loadout section where you, you set everything up. When you actually advance time, you actually you sort of notice that the the music has heightened in in sort of in dramatic sense, um, especially when you get to the evening section where it's at its like highest and most bombastic, which I felt was really cool. Um, it sort of heightened that suspense. Um, but yeah, I think in general the game looks fantastic. Um, the whole aesthetic was was such a, a, a unique style and, and we sort of mentioned as well the those sort of like cartoon um sort of like little bits in between or sort of finishing uh, a loop and sort of fi- figuring out okay i need to go here or this guy's going to end up here and that and sort of getting that idea of who to kill and th- at which stage and using that as sort of a, a story extension was very cool so that the the aesthetic was such a yeah a unique sort of part of this game mm. No, I agree with everything you fine gentlemen said. So if we, we take that positive spin we've just been been sort of discussing and maybe put that upside <laughs> down, put it on its head, and maybe we share some spoiler-free nitpicks and gripes before we maybe deep dive into spoilers and beyond. So um, I'll sort of uh, mention one that it looks like we've all uh, encountered during our playthroughs of Deathloop, and that was uh, Game Freezes. So I had three hard freezes so not just go out of the game back to the playstation home screen and jump back in it was good it was like it was proper hard had to hard close the game reboot the game and that was very disheartening because a couple of those sort of loops i was very deep into making some magic happen and it just took the wind out of my sails like the second time that happened i'm like i'm done for now i'm gonna go watch some television screw you death (laughs) loop i'll see you later and sort of parked it and came back but um outside of that like the squishiness with coal like i don't know if that's a major gripe it's something i mentioned earlier but uh when when you've got juliana with that sniper rifle where uh yeah she can shoot you from 16 islands away one shot never miss like yeah obviously she's a marksman and she'd be doing this for years and years and years and years and years killing you for years in these loops she'd get good at wielding these guns but sometimes like come on i haven't even found you yet because you get the blood splatter (laughs) on on the screen to sort of imply the direction you shot but sometimes i didn't find that very helpful like and it just be shot and i'm panicking immediately and i'm like which way was it was it north was it south was it behind me was she above on a roof and then sometimes it's like i just got to run and hide breathe for a second and then regather because the damage on some of those guns or those abilities she was popping especially if she was running like havoc where it was you know more more bullet sponginess and more damage oh my god it was a bit ridiculous but um yeah, I don't really have any major gripes on nitpicks outside of those freezes. What about yourselves? Uh, I mean, the soft lock, you know, problem was was problematic for me. Like, I'd be halfway through a a mission that was really integral to the storyline, and I'd go into the menu to look at a lead, try to come back out, and it wouldn't actually 
let me out of the menu i couldn't select anything it, like the game was still moving and i could see the character sort of standing there but i just couldn't get out of the menu to do anything with it and i couldn't pause the game or anything so i just had to sort of reset and took me all the way back to the start which was really Wait, frustrating all the way back to um, like the morning like the the beach right no yeah. just just the start okay, of yeah. that particular yeah. mission um yeah. thankfully <laughs> like if it was all the way back in the morning of that loop i'd yeah. have been furious um I found infusing the trinkets um, a, a bit of a crapshoot because, like, if you couldn't afford to infuse a certain one that you really wanted, you wouldn't know when you'd get it again. Especially if mm. you're killing a high-profile target, and then they drop all of like the the exemplary trinkets. Like, it's a bit of a random situation as to picking up which ones. Um, and I guess that's part of the the allure of the loop because, okay, you can just do another loop and, and get it again. But it's like. Yeah, I found that a bit annoying because like if I wanted something that I knew was going to help me out and I didn't have the opportunity to successfully infuse it, it's like, okay, well, I've got to get rid of it again. I don't know when I'm going to get it again. Um, so I found that kind of annoying. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, Juliana sometimes invading at the, the worst times and, and Brendan sort of mentioned it as well. Like it would ruin, it would put a spanner in the, in the, the sort of tactics that you had for a certain run and you would have to sort of once you killed them you'd have to sort of gather yourself and, and and get to a certain position where you know that you were in the in the clear and it was almost like nothing ever happened but you know you've just emptied out half your clip trying to eliminate someone yeah. and that, that sort of ruined it but yeah like it wasn't a major sort of deterrence i think apart from sort of the um the, the soft locking of the game that was probably the major one but other than that it wasn't anything yeah too I'm, major. I'm exactly the same so i won't talk about it too long but it's just it's just so frustrating to be in a menu thinking that you're doing something to to make your like game better whether it's like changing a setting or something and then you try and go back to the game and it's like actually no we're gonna freeze in the menu like it just seems like such an odd time for a game to crash is when there's like nothing going on because you've paused the action um and and it's almost just like you can still move the cursor around the screen you just can't go back to the game uh, that's a really strange way to crash to me at least um so i'm i'm guessing that's something that will be addressed in patches so it's definitely not like a reason not to play the game it happened three times three or four times to me once during the final cutscene of the whole game uh <laughs> oh <laughs> but by that point i was like okay i I know what to do. It actually That's drops rough. you at the beginning of that section, not the beginning of the evening. So uh, that was mm. like a few c- kind of moments. Oh, yeah, thank God. Because I, would, thank cause God. I would have been like, because <laughs> if you got sunk back to the beginning of that evening again, had to deal with that that party. Yeah, I mean, I got pretty good at the party eventually. Um, cause you know, as time goes on, like first I'd take out like one person, then I'd take out two people, and then it's like, okay, I need to take out three people or four or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, that, that's it, it for me. There is something that I'll get to in my in the, my nitpicks and gripes. It's not a huge spoiler thing, but I'll just save it so I've got something to talk about later. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, let's um, we'll park the spoiler-free discussion here. Uh, so listeners, if you have not Definitely played this play game, it. I would yes. suggest stopping this podcast right now, getting your hands on a copy, going and playing it because it is fantastic. One of the best games of 2021. I think we can all pretty well unanimously agree that it is officially 8-bit approved, so it gets the official 8-bit rubber stamp. But um, let's get into some spoiler, terry, uh, spoiler territory right about... Did you say spoiler yeah. terry? <laughs> I did, but then I corrected yeah. myself and said territory. Spoiler terry. He's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> spoiler Jason terry. terry. Uh, yeah. Uh... For some reason, I thought it was Terry Runnels from the WWF. <laughs> Hanging out with Test. No, Edge and Christian she was with, wasn't she? Terry Reynolds? No, it's Perry Satin. No, I remember, I remember no, Terry. That's a, the, another guy. I, I won't describe her. Um, yes. She was very busty. <laughs> <laughs> you, you knew what I was Anyway. Um, let, let, yeah, I know. Spoiler I know. Terry. And anyway. <laughs> spoiler Terry, let's jump right in. Let's go with some of our favorite moments. Apologies to listeners, I got the doggos in here with me at the moment just as we're acclimatizing to the big move. So most of the noise, you're not going to hear any in the final cut because I'm an editing savant. But if there is a couple of farts or barks that I miss, 
that's why so uh apologies just go check out my instagram you'll see the dogs you'll love them and go you know what they can make noise because they're adorable <laughs> so anyway spoiler territory favorite moments Jono. yeah so i loved um taking out fia and charlie in the in the what even their hideout i guess because it's, it's such a big build up <laughs> to get to the hideout you, you've got the photo or you first of all you figure out that they're having this affair and that you can take them out together sweet then you find this photo then you finally track down which part of the co- I, I went around that whole island looking for that coastline uh, <laughs> it's like oh it's right there so close to the to the bunker uh, and then you get in there it's like sweet found their hideout oh wait there's a secret code and I gotta go find four you know artistic interpretations of, of whatever to figure this out so you finally get down there and uh, there they are and um, it's the right time of the day or whatever and it's like okay how can I do this I could just shoot them or I can flood the whole place and die with them mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if there's a way to escape the flooding but I never did <laughs> there's not I tried <laughs> I never was able to, to escape the flooding um, so that was that was fun and listening to their banter as well it's like man these two are really not they're not good together <laughs> um and no, trying to figure yeah. out like okay he's charlie's he's he's like lobotomized himself to create this robot the two-bit robot yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh two-bit uh and yet you know what he's found love even though he's got half a brain and he's a little bit you know a bit of a step slower i'd imagine after yeah removing removing half of his cranium He's found love still, so it seems uh, like hope an abusive relationship, though. So I felt like I was kind of doing them a favor by like taking them out, yeah, by killing <laughs> it's like them, you just put them out of their misery, <laughs> uh, and and break the loop, and then infiltrating the party, like that was a that was a cool thing, like just to, to get everyone at the party together, and uh, figuring out like the way, like when when the the light bulb switches on you go okay i can use this party as a means to get everyone together and then finally seeing it come to fruition was really cool uh and then the the ending um i like I, i said before my my game froze as she handed over one of those pistols juliana to to take her out um so as i reloaded and did it again i was like oh, i wonder if i can just shoot her from here so as i was walking towards her, i just took her out from from a distance and and didn't even get and, and that time i got no anything. monologue i was like <laughs> it's cool that they let you do that that was actually a really i i thought that was a, like usually the game would be like you can't pull the trigger on the npc or whatever but the game's like if you want to shoot her then you can just shoot her um and so i i did that and then i went back and played like two more endings where one you know you count to three you pull the trigger um I, I didn't i didn't play to see what happens if you like like just let her live and you relive like the loop over and over again but that is another that's, option that's what that's what did. i did but i'll explain I didn't want to do it because I didn't want it to be like, ah, well, you didn't break the loop, so now you have to do the party again. And then it's just like, oh, well, the game, like, the the right ending is to kill her. That's what I thought was going to happen. But uh, you went through. Yeah, I I followed through. Yeah, that's what I did too. I'm like, I've been playing this game for 20 odd hours here or whatever. I'm not going to pivot now that um, we've had a bit of an endearing moment. So, full spoilers, we're in spoiler territory. Partway through the game. And it's one of my favorite moments is the reveal that Juliana is Colt's daughter. So father and father and daughter have been killing themselves every day for decades and decades and decades. But like, it's sort of then the back and forth and the dialogue through the hackamajig took on additional meaning because there's sort of some ribbing and some jovialness and some smart assiness that I'm like, you know what? I'd probably say that to my dad too if he was doing this kind of stuff to me over and over again. So I sort of like, I started to see it from both characters' sides. But um, when it came to the big decision, Mm. we'll talk about the ending probably in a bit more detail shortly. Um, I stuck to the mission. That's what I was trying to get to. I'm like, I've gone this far. I've taken out seven of the eight visionaries I'm not pulling up now because I need to see this through. Did that happy days. But leading up to that and having that, I guess, that perfect assassination day where you're you're killing all these people in such creative ways 
and like taking down Alexis at his party where you actually you sneak into his part of the of the manor and see that he's a bit of an amateur DJ and he's got his favorite track synced up to the to the DJ deck in the bathroom so you line that up with the main one in the party hall and he comes in and he's like get out of here you know this is my jam I'm dancing because they're all in masks so you don't know who's who in the zoo yeah but when you get that moment and using that nexus slab there threw that thing down every person <laughs> on that dance floor was then interconnected pulled out the old boomstick rapier one shot to the head and just bodies just you know obviously they turn to dust and there's blood and then bits of everything everywhere it was such a good good moment for me can i can i just say i wish i'd used nexus in that moment because i obviously got everyone out and you know seen that he was there and i was like okay what if i just use my silence pistol to just one shot him in the head and it, and you sort of mentioned with the the nail gun as well it's like if you don't hit them in the right spot you'll end up being like oh that hurts mm. oh he's right there yeah. and that happened to me as like i hit him in the head and didn't get him and then everyone every single person in the party is like <laughs> colt is there get him and i'm like oh, i went God. with the, so like so the then melee I- kill like instant kill with that one because i i had the frustration of like you know lining up charlie and fia with with uh, Nexus and thinking I could take them out with one bullet, which I think there's a trophy for that. And I, you can, I got yeah, that. I with tried my to, to take them out with the silenced pistol, and I, they just looked at me like, "Get him!" And I was like, "Oh what? crap!" So <laughs> that explosive yeah. rapier, even like it, even one shots Juliana if you get a sort of from mm. say torso up, one shot every time. So like it's tough to shoot when you got that single bullet with the slow reload, but. It feels so good when you whip around and you pop her on a roof or something. You're like, yes, sucked it. Now give me your slab and give me your residium and let's go. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned the Juliana daughter, I am your father in reverse kind of reveal. Did you think that it worked? Because I felt like they didn't really dwell on it very long and it kind of just washed over and it made me think like, was she messing with him? Like, is it like a real thing? Um, I didn't also didn't really understand the time travel component of that, so maybe I missed an a audio diary or something. But yeah, I think there was a lot of stuff, especially with the Horizon experiment, which was I guess the predecessor to Eon. That I, even though it was presented to me, I still didn't quite fully understand. Um, I think at one point they were saying Colt worked with Russians, and then he sort of became part of the eon program as sort of like this this haven of people working to create some sort of better life in black reef and i'll, I'll explain uh, well i'll explain my thoughts on it at the end well i mean it's probably not part of the ending but like i almost sort of saw black reef as this analogy for like either heaven or purgatory um and it's, yeah, it's heaven it's, definitely like you, you listen to some of the things juliana was saying it's like you know this is paradise we want to try and make paradise for people this is this is heaven you know you can make this whatever you want we can yeah. make it great we can li- live these awesome days again and again and again it's awesome and it's the best but and the, the fact that know, they thanks. were looping is is part of that sort of you know you're in heaven or you're in purgatory mm. sort of thing so um not heaven for yeah, um for harriet's weird. crew definitely <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> that was weird um john have um, you got anything else no that's that's the main thing i like i said i was a bit confused but as far as like favorite moments, this kind of bleeds into the nitpicks and gripes because in one way I thought it was cool, like Brendan mentioned before, how the, these visionaries would retreat when you attack them or they all have their own kind of fight or flight kind of response. Um, and then I, I guess it was Fia, the one in the reactor, wasn't it? Yeah. So yes. th- that discovering that okay she's gonna like nuke the entire island if she gets discovered was was um was wild and i thought that was a, a cool idea in, in theory because it makes you like think like okay i have to stealth this i have to shut down the reactor whatever i do like i have to make sure she doesn't see me um but it was also very frustrating being like the second or third part of the day and then you have to it's not just you just don't just die and loop it's like game over like you know what i mean like that's a very final Mm. way to get taken out um compared to every other part of the game um so i i yeah i wasn't a big fan of the the end game like the 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 death state of of the reactor but i like love the concept that um she's willing to to (laughs) 
explode everything just to avoid avoid you breaking the loop Mm. I I really enjoyed um, dealing with Charlie and 2-Bit I felt that that combination um, was quite funny and I think just 2-Bit's mannerisms and his speech um, especially when you're going through uh, conditioned attachment was quite funny Um, and taking the um the little, the little Charlie speaking doll. I can't remember what it was called. I was, it was called the Runt. I was the Runt about to say. Yeah, the, my God, the, that was that was a challenge in itself. Picking him up in the uh, in the library and hearing him just yelling all the time, and you're like, "Shut the fuck up!" Like, and it sort of it was interesting because you had to sort of work your play style around it too. Because it's like if you were going around a corner and someone heard you holding it, you'd be alerted. Um, so you had to sort of like put it down in a far enough away place then go around the corner then kill them and then pick up the runt and keep going with it so it was always a bit bit challenging in that regard but I just think that the humour that um, Charlie also made with the tapes because he was like taking people's recordings and making them sound like they were being really positive to him <laughs> yeah. um, like like um, Smithers I think, you're good at turning yeah, me on <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> it, one of them was like you have uh, I think it was like Wenji like a recording that Wenji did for um, for Charlie and it was like you have such a huge brain I want to get inside your brain and it was just like obviously like snippets cut really you know obtusely and weirdly but it made it sound really positive which I thought was really funny because he's obviously such an eager maniac so he needs that um, that attention but yeah I think that was one of the big things for me I think having a couple chances in break the loop mode I thought was was fun because um, it was such a unique you know detour from the, the sort of single player aspect of the game I think everyone enjoys the opportunity to be a bit of a dick sometimes and ruin someone else's game um, so that was uh, a do you mean protect fun. the loop obviously like yeah yeah, yeah protect yeah. the loop that's what I meant um, and <laughs> you know being able to you know obviously at that sort of point you know you've only got one life and colt has three so it's like the the odds are not you know not stacked in your favor but it was always a lot of fun regardless um and yeah i think we we were sort of verging on talking about the nitpicks and gripes i guess we just move on to it because i had exactly the same thing as you guys um the the powering up stations part especially trying to get into the rack was uh, a nightmare i hate it yeah <clears throat> yeah so you need to go into multiple stations to get um words to join together a voice operated password that only cult well he used to know once upon a time and i guess juliana knows this password too but you have to yeah go into the main power station um in was in uptown I uh, know it was in the, the What's complex. It called? Yeah, in the complex, you have you have to go there, reroute the power, and then you can then go to these these now powered on or these now opened up power stations. But you can't do them all in one hit. They take one of those eight hour slices every time, mm. so it's really really painful. Like they're not long runs, but it was just tedious. Grabbing that was the probably batteries from around the complex was the thing. Like there's there's two kind of close by, and then there's two in like the, a couple of rooms back, and you got to charge them up, and it's just like uh, it, it was a whole thing. Well, I'd um on the run I'd do where I'd bust in through the top of the power station. I'd grab the battery that mm-hmm. was near the charger. I'd charge that, take that one down with me, and then there was one half charged yeah. on a seat and I'd just take that as well and that'd give me the other 100 I don't know megawatts or whatever because you needed 200 but it didn't matter if the other one was part charged mm. it took them anyway so. yeah exactly <laughs> but yeah very tedious that was the part where it's like oh this is mm. this is a bit much the loops are a bit painful right now that was the only time where I felt like fuck these loops man I just want to be able to yeah. do this in <laughs> one morning run or morning to it's midday the, or something you know and like I was so glad that they saved you having to do it in other aspects like when you give 2-bit the recording that makes Wenji go to the party like that's it and then uh, with, with Igor you have to like disrupt his experiment in the morning do you have to do that every time because I did it every time just because I yeah you do yes yeah you do you've, you've got to you've got to actually get that yeah. going and then he goes because without it like yes. he was still he would still so be that's, the complex so that's night, the, so. the good mm. the good thing with that eagle one quick. though was like the entrance and exit to the bunker was like right next door so you'd be you'd have that one done in 10 minutes which wasn't bad but yeah still yeah. a bit tedious that's mm. it so I, I guess that yeah. adds to the overall 
feeling with like this is a loop it's not like a, a gimmick like you actually have to stick to it do everything properly um but yeah that was like the only time where i was getting like 12 minutes flashbacks where i was like okay i fucked up and now i've got to go all the way back through it again knowing yeah. what i know now but what do you like- mean willem dafoe is gonna punch me in the face again <laughs> but um one other thing i didn't put in my on the run sheet here for nitpicks and gripes i was i felt a little cheated regarding the lack of slabs i assumed that each one of these visionaries would all have a unique slab or ability so when i ended up getting you know the the five i thought Fuck, how do i get these other three are they like from random side quests do i just stumble across <laughs> them is it rng but no then i did some google and it's like well it's the, you only get five i'm like oh Fuck you then, okay. What do you want? You want more than greedy? Give me some more you can get abilities. Them from Juliana too. That I'm not going to so use. Often you wouldn't need to take out the visionary to, to get kill it, the yeah. people for the upgrade. You just get yeah, exactly. I just felt cheated. <laughs> but yeah, what else is there to say? That's not. That's not like as far as nitpicks I, go. We we don't have many. Like we the really whole don't. like I said no. before the whole daughter thing. Like I. I feel like they maybe it's just me maybe I wasn't paying enough attention I feel like they could have been less subtle with that I think they could have been a bit more heavy handed like talking like they didn't talk about like they didn't. he didn't yeah. talk about her childhood he didn't talk about like her mother like there was not really a- yeah like like you get like two throwaway sound recordings and then like a diary entry about the mother like the wife that was pregnant as you were going yeah. on that first mission but yeah like like you'd think Cole, uh, not Cole, Colt would have shown more emotion. Like, obviously, Juliana's known this whole time and she's been dealing with it the whole time because that's so fresh and brand new to Colt. You'd think he'd be like, oh my God, what? Like, yeah, he'd, he'd sort of lean into more of this this father mode straight away and be like, you know what? Let's talk this through. But instead, he's yeah. like, no, I'm going to fucking kill you again. Then I'm going to go Pretty get this guy. Much. Like, you know, like there was no fatherly instincts that triggered when he sort of had that moment and realized yeah. that the person he's been killing or all even just like is daughter, like, so are like, you messing with me like is this a real thing like i don't believe you like sh- like well i th- i think he realized that there was a greater good mm. sort of situation for him and i think that there was a certain point when he realized he you could hear him just go fuck and he, <laughs> yeah, i remember that big f bomb <laughs> and he, re- he that moment when he realizes it's like his his mission doesn't change regardless of the fact that she's his daughter like he just wants to get out of there and you know continue on with his life whatever it may be yeah so, well there was I, that part it was was touching and i guess it weaves into the ending where they're they're talking and he's presented with these these two pistols about breaking the loop or embracing the loop i guess you could say but before i i we continue on with that with those pistols is that a reference to dishonored because i'd seen a couple of people talking about how this is all in this arcane sort of connected universe where you you know you'd have dishonored in the 1600s 1700s mm. um death loop in and the then sort pray of, in the future and then pray in the future and then obviously with the the antique pistols God, i'd, that could I'd have be been so reference. down if it had a big shared connected universe like that like i'd love that and i would geek out about that hardcore and it makes sense like from the 10 seconds i've just thought about it as you mentioned it i'm like you know what there could be some nice continuity there and some little connected threads and, and maybe the pistols is that maybe that is leaning into um the dishonored franchise there who knows? but uh someone knows know. let's find out who knows <laughs> yeah. phil spencer is no yeah absolutely. shout out to, to xbox by the way for buying um i can't remember the guy's name who did uh cult's voice work but he wasn't able to play the game and xbox actually bought him a playstation 5 so he could he play able to play the game um, <laughs> death loop yeah and and experience himself yeah. in this game so i thought that was a really cool moment i saw on social media but yeah the the ending uh where cult i guess like as you touched on there tilby he, he wasn't leaning too heavily into the the fatherhood thing but in those final discussions with juliana where he's like you know w- i want to give you a proper life like let's live a full life let's wake up and know that this is our last life you know like there's no there's no do-overs there's no loop we wake up tomorrow and this is this the first day of the rest of our lives and they can live it together and in unison and and have have a proper life instead of this bloody insane loop that they've been experiencing for years and years and years but yeah i just couldn't veer away from the mission and um sorry juliana i shot you right in the head now there's there's a couple things that i wanted to say firstly when i mentioned that i 
didn't kill her that was only because when the count of three happened i tried clicking it and pressed it too late and i was like you did try to kill her oh no that <laughs> i did try and i just it's didn't slow, get it in time and it just played it just played the the happy ending for it um, she was yeah. like <laughs> and i was pulling the trigger already <laughs> One, <laughs> and it's pretty jarring too. Like you see her sort of crumple into the, into that chair, and you're staring at your your now deceased daughter with a hole in her head. Like yeah, it's, it's heavy. When the gun goes off, like literally the the millisecond that you pull the the trigger, it it did make me go like, oh, like what if I just didn't pull it? Like what would have happened? Like would she have shot me, or would you know? That's what I've assumed would happen, but I guess not because there's a happy ending, supposedly. Mm, yeah so the ending i got was yeah you you don't pull the trigger she doesn't either and she's like i thought you might do that and then they basically live the the loop as father and daughter playing baseball. and there is a, a, a playing catch <laughs> i wish there there is an end you, you basically wake up on the beach again but yeah. she's there as well so you're starting to live this life together and there is an end credit scene where she calls him dad and she, yeah. he's like no fuck that that's that's <laughs> gross i don't like that um, that's pretty cool I, I did think as I sort of mentioned earlier that that sort of um, analogy for for heaven or like purgatory the way that what I was sort of thinking was the fact that he kills her basically breaks that loop and when he wakes up on the beach again the sky is like dark and really sort of like brooding it's all broken yeah yeah uh, what I sort of assumed was because he killed her it sort of broke that heaven loop and now they're in hell um, and sort of like the the reason that she didn't want him to break the loop was because they were in heaven and didn't want heaven to end, this paradise to end, so that this whole sort of feeling of euphoria just kept going on and on and on. But because he broke it, it's now he's got to live the rest of mm. that that life in, in hell, which is weird. Like, it's a very weird sort of thought to have, but that's just sort of what I thought. But but that's yeah. also like, you, yeah, shoot, shoot Juliana, but then obviously it's, been revealed just recently before that that you are the ninth visionary and you have to die as well so then you've got to jump off this giant floating space tower of doom to yeah. end yourself and then yeah you wake up on the beach juliana's there and, and before like before you shoot her she's sort of saying i'm gonna hunt you down because i wake up before you every single time i'm gonna have a bullet like a gun in your mouth when you wake up and you wake up and lo and behold she's right there pistol at, pistol at the ready but she she hesitates she doesn't shoot him and she just walks off and then Colt sort of stands up and yeah looks at this uh, very dystopian broken science fiction-y sky now but then it cuts to the credits I'm like there should be more what is yeah. going on here like the loop's broken and that's it like it's clear that it's like sequel time baby mm. but the ending was so abrupt to me and I'm like what okay surely there's an end credit stinger or something and then nothing i'm like what is going I think, on yeah i don't I think it's more. a sequel thing i just think it's like yeah Up like they just want it that they just wanted it to end like the, the goal is to break the loop you break the loop and then what what are they supposed to do show cult like driving back to los angeles and getting a job as a landscaper like that that's the end like <laughs> i wouldn't have been upset about that yeah it, it felt like it felt like the like they ran out of money and go fuck let's just cut it right like i'm not cheapening the game by saying mm. that it just was far too abrupt for my it's, taste. it's not the close it is certainly no closure and i think that that's what no it's a it's a style like there's m movies that end like that you know it's it's kind of a cliffhanger ending he just says, "Okay, like, like, okay, now my it's like my now my real life begins." I guess is what he's thinking. Even though th th that's part where it falls apart for me is like, who was he before? What was it like? At some point, he wanted to go to this island. Like that that was him that wanted to go there and live this life there. Um, and then just suddenly he, well, he was a lowly grunt in the military, and then they they bumped him up promotion wise because he was the one that volunteered to go on this dangerous scientific yeah. expedition. Did you get that that audio? And it's like he was a he was a private now now like oh nope sorry now he's a lieutenant cult rah 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 instead because he's taken this risk and and he like, was in so the he was in the nothing. Raketo plan as well. He t he took the original flight, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that's where he got the promotion as well on the back of that for this and yeah, but. 
it was good it was very very sudden for me that ending it just felt like the game had a nice steady pace steady pace steady pace you get to that final loop you break the loop and i guess yeah that's the goal of this game but it was like yep you've broken it see you later game's finished (laughs) i was like oh i did enjoy i want more i did enjoy by the way uh the song that plays in the end credits oof lush it was very Mm. very james bond very you know very snake eater and it's sort of very reminiscent of that sort of 60s 70s style which i thought it sort of wrapped it up in a nice bow i i think i think yeah it it really did it was just i'm just selfish and greedy and want more but i'm going to um try out to protect the loop wait bentley settle down apologies i'm going to try out to protect the loop mode just to see how much of a dick I can be to real people in this game because uh, I want to feel like Juliana felt when she shot me in the face from across the map on a rooftop. So uh, I'm going to do that to some poor, lowly, unsuspecting PlayStation 5 users in the next week or two once I get into it. And I can't yeah, I, I might go... I have been playing something else since finishing, but I might go back because there's a few side quests that I haven't explored. There's a few like creative ways to kill people that I haven't done. And there's, yeah, I definitely know that there's some um, some lore and stuff to, to discover that uh, also haven't done. Like there's this like this trivia quiz that you can do in, in one section about Black Reef and the whole project. And then there's like this, um, you know, all these delivery points that I never figured out how to unlock them. And then, you know, there's all the musicians playing in those little bubbles. Apparently, you can, like, cut off their oxygen to kill them, to make them suffocate. Yeah, yeah they I've were done talking that. You about get that. the crank yeah. and then you just... Rip, yeah, rip, so rip. I kept finding the cranks and having no idea where to use them, so I never did. But, uh, yeah, I guess there's a bit more to do if you, if you want to do everything. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean... The, the protect the loop thing seems pretty like I've only really dipped my toe into it but it seems fairly deep as far as like you upgrade you get all these perk points every time you do it reminds me a little bit of that Tomb Raider um, that Shadow of the Tomb Raider no, sorry Rise of the Tomb Raider survival mode where it's like the longest the longer you survive the more points you get and then you can upgrade your your character you probably know a bit more to speak about it, Tilby, because you sound like you've had a bit more success than I did. <laughs> Only a little bit. <laughs> very slightly. It's very similar. You get like very similar sort of perks and trinkets to, to upgrade as, as Juliana. Um, you, you will sort of be graded on how often you can kill him. Obviously, you've got you know three lives for Colt and only one for Juliana, like I said. But yeah, it's it's very similar in that regard. Maybe, maybe we'll leave this spoiler cast here, but maybe we will just uh, throw our respective last words on our time with uh, Arcane's 2021 88 rated Metacritic classic, Deathloop. Tilby, what's your last word on Deathloop before we uh, shut down this studio? I'm thinking it's, you know, up there for me as well. I think, you know, we, we've talked about it being a game of the year contender and. I think the last time that I was on here, I was talking about Ratchet and Clank being my game of the year. I think if if it's not very close to that, I think it's even overtaken it. I think this was for me an experience rather than you know marveling about the sort of style of the game and you know the aesthetic and the music. I think the idea of working in a loop and planning and sort of scheming about the next place to go and the next person to kill and what time to do it was something that I hadn't done in a video game for quite some time, if at all. Um, and I think the way that Arcane sort of organized it was such a an engrossing sort of feeling because you knew that if you failed, you had to go all the way back. So you've got to be really patient and thoughtful, but it also meant that you wanted to see what happened next. So you, you couldn't, I just couldn't put the controller down without, you know, finishing this loop and figuring out that, oh, Ramble and Frank's going to be over here at this time of day meeting with so-and-so. So it's like, a lot of that planning coming full circle was so invigorating and satisfying for me. Um, I think, yeah, on on you know the aesthetic, I think beautiful. I think parts of it were were very sort of dark and gritty. Obviously, going through a lot of the bunkers, but um, when you're out in the open and and sort of 
looking at the 70s aesthetic it was super beautiful but yeah i think all up as a combined package it's it's fantastic like i definitely think it's one of the the best games i've played all year and um it's going to be tough to beat for not only for shooters in general but for games in general this year mm. oh, fair enough indeed should i just run a pick what yeah you got for us? yeah um i mean this is a fantastic game i've mentioned bioshock a few times already and i i do see a lot of thematic comparisons to that where it's like this supposed utopia that just kind of you know kind of breaks down for one reason or another in into chaos and that's what makes it an interesting world to me is that there's things and there's there's figures to discover and, and learn about and kill and you know just the the whole the whole like idea that you can you know you you can go guns blazing or you can use these cool abilities again very bioshocky and i think drawing influence from a game as as um beloved and as critically well uh, you know as critically acclaimed as, as a bioshock you know in, in that kind of mold is a great thing to see modernized in in this way from a studio like arcane that's got so much experience with with stealth combat and storytelling through prey and through the dishonored series and it's a huge win for playstation to to get this as an exclusive even if it's for a year or even if it's you know on pc or whatever um and it's it's sad to to think that they're heading over to to the team green permanently but uh it's a it's a good way to go out for for that and it also places it in this weird position where i feel like playstation isn't really marketing it as well as they could and bethesda's not really backing it as well as they could because it's in this gray area where the you know playstation and bethesda are splitting like the, the money's going across the the table to, to the other person as much as they put into it it's helping their competition so it's kind of like this weird thing so i just i'm glad that the game's resonating with people because it very easily could have gone out there and if it, if it wasn't quite as good as it is i think um there wouldn't be the chatter and a lot of people would miss out on what is a really cool cool game um so my last word on death loop is play this game i mean you've you've got to the spoiler cast you've got through the spoiler section as well but if you haven't played this game maybe if you started this game finish this game tell people to play this game and uh play it on xbox if you have to wait 12 months and for some reason still listened this far <laughs> yeah but um ju- just just wanted to to confirm pretty much both of the things you guys just just said as far as your last words on death loop i i think this is sort of arcane taking the best bits of dishonored and praying the things they've learned working in parallel on stuff like wolfenstein youngblood and creating this experience that is death loop it's very unique visually stunning the gameplay loop is awesome the powers the combat the comedy and the tone i'm all for it this is a game that's just right in my wheelhouse as far as the the tone the themes the delivery of all these things the black comedy the gore the viscera just it's it's great and and the you know the 20 ish hours or whatever it might have been for my runtime to go from from start to credits i loved that entire time um i really 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 rate this game it's one of the best games of 2021 it's in discussions as far as the game of the year for me but as i said i haven't just sat and put all my thoughts down in in more finite detail to see if it's currently top of the food chain or if a couple of the other games i've played this year are narrowly edging it out but um it's well worth your time it's well worth your money and as we said uh in the non-spoiler part we uh have officially 8-bit approved death loop and um yeah one of the best games of 2021 and um you know in the past several years so we'll see what arcane do in the future i'm sure that they might be one of these studios that will have releases on playstation as well as xbox i think that might be one of the more communal based studios under the team green banner now but uh yeah death loop get it in your hands play it if you've already played it 
or if you're you know playing it as you're listening to this jump on twitter and talk to us about it at it's tilby at Jono himself at brendan 8bit or as a whole at we are 8bit because we'd love to get your thoughts you know what was the play styles that you sort of inherited and utilized during your time on black reef was there certain abilities or weapons you lent into some that you hated maybe you one of the few that loved the nail gun come at me and tell me <laughs> how you made that stupid gun work because it was absolutely useless I'd prefer just throwing glass bottles at people instead of shooting people with that gun. But uh, yeah, Deathloop, it's fantastic. Check it out. Thanks again to Bethesda for the copies of the game on PlayStation 5 for us to play through and bring you this spoiler cast. But until next time, Ape Nation, much love. Stay hungry. And have a fulfilling day. Toxic illusion.